As a kid going to St. Mary's in Grinnell, I have two lasting images of worship. The second one, the one that still haunts me at night, is when I was goofing around and after uh, being warned once or twice or maybe 13 or 14 times, my father said, enough. It was like the voice of God. Not a happy God, by the way. Enough with me. And we walked out, and I thought, huh, I wonder why, man, you act up, you, you get taken out of church. This seems like a pretty good deal. We walked down the stairs, and we had, I think it was called, it was, it was an, like an old-fashioned disciplinary technique was utilized on my backside. And then, then we walked back into those steps, and it wasn't the spanking which bothered me so much. It was that long slow walk of shame I had to make back into the sanctuary as everyone said, ah, we know what just happened to him. <laughs> so that's the second image. I will deal with that one in good time. Another 20 or 30 years of praying about it. I'll probably address that. I'll, be, I'll have moved beyond that. But the other one, the good one, was watching my parents take communion. There was something holy about that experience. I grew up in a family. We did not pray unless, unless grandma came over. Then we, then we prayed. But unless grandma was there, we didn't pray. We didn't talk about our faith. This, that's just not what we did in our family. But when I watched my parents take communion, I knew there's something special going on. I don't know if it was the golden chalice, the words of the priest, the architecture of the building, or simply watching my parents go up. And in, the, in, in that church, Kids would sit as their parents would go forward, just watching my parents go up and, and, and receive this gift with reverence and respect. It had a lasting, made a lasting imprint on me. What's funny is that about three or four years later, after I remember sitting there thinking, wow, this is, whatever's happening up there is just, it's special. A mere three or four years later, I had a completely different perspective. Three or four years later, I was a teenager, and I remember I needed to, I needed to rebel against something, and for me, my rebellion was going to be church. I decided I wasn't going to church with my parents anymore, and so I used the oldest excuse in the book. What's the oldest excuse for not wanting to go to church? It's boring. Hell, you sick would have been better, but you can only be sick once or twice in a row, and then eventually your parents take you to the hospital, and then, then that's even worse. No, I used to say to my parents, Mom, Dad, church is so boring. Which is, a, by the way, a good lesson, teenagers. You tell your parents church is boring enough, God will make you into a pastor. That's just, <laughs> that's God's great sense of humor. That's what I, 